The morning we left the hotel, the Lawande boys were singing in the back of our bus, singing for all their might. Any anxiety that the team was feeling as we left the gate was soon swept away with an exhilarating song from the back of the bus. Still, as the bus approached the maximum security facility of Zamba Prison, pulling up in front of the main gate, a quiet had fallen upon the 13 team members as we strained to see the facility, a drab windowless brick building. Outside the gate, Bougainvillea, Royal Poinciana, and a flower garden graced the entryway of rusted barbed wire. We were to find, however, as we entered the facility, quite a bit less. Built in 1935, designed to hold 700 prisoners, today Zamba is crowded with over 2,000 inmates. A truck from the AMFC warehouse, loaded with rice, corn, and oil, had arrived earlier and been unloaded. In presentations in the central exercise area, these were then given to the warden in aid to the prison. A grateful warden offered his thanks to African Missions for Christ for the contribution. The team was grateful for the tent that had been provided to protect us from the hot sun. Meanwhile, during the day's exercises, the prisoners mostly stood in the hot sun. We saw very little evidence of drinking water being provided to any of the inmates. Clean water was always in short supply within the prison. The prisoners stood four and five deep in a complete circle around our tent for the entire period we were there. The famous Zamba prison band that had recently been nominated for a Grammy played music for the entertainment that was provided for us as well as the prisoners throughout the day inside. It became apparent that this day was a very important event in the lives of the inmates as their attention never wandered. Each man was fixed upon us, visitors, either fascinated simply by our presence and more than likely the mystery of whom we were, where we had come from, and for what reason we were there. It was in their eyes that we found the depth of the moment. No one blinked for fear of missing something. Something very unusual was happening for them. Simply our presence within the exercise yard seated in our lime green t-shirts, good shoes on our feet, a big Nikon camera, all this other world for them. Christian, Muslim, unchurched alike stood or eventually sat on the red sandy dirt in the sun and pondered who we were, what we had, and more than likely, the remorse they felt inside for once again finding themselves here within Zamba. Nowhere else they could go for the time being, imprisoned, we would be leaving and stepping back into freedom before the day was over. These men would not. I could not sit and watch, only shooting a camera shot here or there across the exercise yard. The urge to stand and meet these men where they live with a touch and a word was far too great. The touch, in a form of a handshake and a word of encouragement, albeit in English, very far from Chua, the national language, was a hope they would understand as a voice of concern and love. Soon other team members came and wanted to offer a personal touch to the men ringing us in a full circle. Not that friendships were made, but recognition was offered for as many as would respond to a touch and a friendly word. Recognition as a fellow human being incarcerated within an inhumane facility short of funding, food, 
fresh water and rehabilitation, a simple necessity granted to us visitors nearly every single day of our lives, but certainly absent at Zamba. Pastor Russell McElroy, one of the co-directors of African Missions for Christ, with his wife, Evangelist Teresa McElroy, stepped up the center of the yard, asking the inmates the simple question, would you like to be free? Russell had been called years prior to serve with the ministry to those incarcerated. He held a holy Bible in one hand, a microphone in the other, and spoke in gentle words to the men encircling him. We all waited in anticipation as to what the response from the men would be. Walking the men along the path of salvation in Christ, the men stood or sat with complete attention to the words, as translated by Pastor Godfrey into Chua, each man receiving in his heart a new kind of conviction within their hearts. Pastor Russ eventually came to a point where he asked who would choose to accept Christ then and there within the prison walls and barbed wire. Many raised their hands and in response prayed with Russell the prayer of accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Some kneeled in humbleness. Others remained standing. No matter what position the men who responded that day were brought to the gates of salvation with Pastor Russell's call. Maxwell Banda, sent to prison in 2014. I've been here at Zamba Prison for three years now. I was arrested and convicted of official corruption in 2014. I was working for the government of Malawi as a police officer. Here in the prison, I've been preaching the gospel for three years. I will be released May 16, 2017. Then I may return to my home in Lalongwe. I am not the way I was when I came in, but I have changed inside here. Thanks. Prince Henry Rice sent to prison in 2008. I broke the law of defilement. I was not a very good person. I know better now. I have been here in prison for seven years and five months. I have seven more months and I can go home. Frank Maxwell Machesso, sent to prison in 2015. I was a shopkeeper. I took money from the shop where I had my job. It is not good. I was sentenced to eight years. I will be here for a while. Yamakani Letasi, sent to prison in 2016. I am 28 years old. I was a primary school teacher. I was charged and convicted of the defilement of a 14-year-old girl student. I have been here for 10 months. I am from Machinga village, Nimdera in the Neanderthal district. I will go home in 11 years and two months. Prosper Tobulu, sent to prison in 2006. I am 24 years old. I was accused and sentenced to prison for obtaining money by false pretense, despite the fact that I did not commit it. I sentenced to two years in prison. Currently, I have spent six months here. I came from Mulanje district and am having the case 172 of 2016. At home, I have a wife and a seven-month-old daughter who lack my help. They are caught up in the suffering because of me. Please help me get release. Gloria Manzi, a prison guard. I am 39 years old and I have been a guard here for 10 years. I am married and I have four children, two boys and two girls. This is a very good job and I like the work I do here. Kingston Loudon Chopojola. I was born September 18, 1984. I was a businessman before I was convicted of robbery with violence. We were five guys. I was the last one. 
They gave us six years imprisonment with hard labor. But God helped me after receiving Jesus with Ra Papa, Theresa McElroy, in December 2015. On November 13, 2016, Ra Papa came again when I was at Zamba. Then I was an artist with the prison band singing gospel music, and people told me a lot when I was on stage. When Man of God started praying, something touched me after a few days. I was surprised when I was called to reception and told that I've been released. I was a free man. When I reached home, I was so shocked to see my house was empty. All my property was gone. I only remained with one house. I am facing challenges due to lack of job and no business funds. I have a family that looks up to me. My wife left me with four kids. She married another man. My sentence was for six years, but by the grace of God, I only served one year, ten months, thanks to Rapa Pa. One special offering that African Missions for Christ brought with the team were gift towels for the inmates. These cloth towels here handed out to prisoners as gestures of goodwill. A simple white terry cloth towel is a wonderful treasure in such a place. These towels would become many tools for the owners as hard as life is there in prison. Obviously, for use after a shower or drying your face and hands, but when outside in the yard, the towel could be used as head covering in the hot sun, or it could be rolled up and used as a pillow for the head, sleeping on the concrete floor at night. When Mama Malawi began passing out the gifts there arose many shouts of joy, and she led them in a celebration dance of the towels. The mission team joined in the celebration and eventually it seemed the entire facility was engaged in shared joy. This was an awesome time watching the men come together and dance and for a moment a sense of freedom rang out across the exercise yard at Zamba Prison. <laughs> Fabuanji.